Good morning, friends. Some days it just feels like it never ends. Does that happen to you? This cancer journey is the never ending journey. I feel like I'm so, I got real gritty and I decided that I was going to be tenacious. I was going to be persistent and I was going to be a scholar. And that's the power of words. Tenacious, persistent scholar was what guided me through this journey. I was able to starve a high growth, aggressive cell type and had that tumor stay the same shape over, let's see, from when I was diagnosed on December 1st, all the way through January 10th, when I was finally able to get all the insurance and all of the space in the operating room, my team coordinated, that took some time. That's a miracle, right? I asked for big miracles from God. I delivered with discipline in knowing that nothing in this addictive world of food that we live in tastes as good as being cancer free. And now here I am back at the eye doctor because um, something, he saw something in my eye and because we're new and my former eye doctor was closed to re relocate their office, he wasn't sure if that was something that's new and that might be a result of cancer or whether that's just something that is there. Um, there's been no changes in vision. So again, keeping that high vibrancy. My word this year is courage. So I'm choosing to carry courage. I'm expecting bold miracles from God in this universe, alignment with abundance and having joy, choosing joy as a part of your journey. The reason why it's easy for me to do this is because I have a destination declaration. I know exactly what I'm working on this year. I know it will not go according to plan. I expect that or something better. And I've been doing that since divorce in 2009. So people go, wow, how did you achieve all this, right? How did you end up being able to afford a million and a half dollar home as a single mom with zero support, no child support, no maintenance? How did you do it, right? I remember back in 2000, I lived in my Honda Civic. I had moved away from family for a boy. Don't advise any woman to ever do that. And when things went incredibly horrifically wrong, I ended up having to leave. And it was the dot-com boom in Silicon Valley. There were not apartments available. And so I took shelter in my Honda Civic, luckily only for two weeks um, before a teacher at my school noticed that I was at school all the time. Classroom sure is a nice place to hang out. And as a first year teacher, I had so much work to do. So I'm li literally living proof that when you have a strategic plan for your life, when you consider eight dimensions, not just career, not just health, not just your relationships, that you're designing with intention. When you do that, my friends, you live a little different. And I know I'm the weirdo that lives a little bit different. Yet what I see in the world, I think, oh my gosh, the reason a midlife crisis exists is because people never created a plan and they quit learning after graduation, whether that was high school or college, all of a sudden that learning bug, that scholarly study bug went away. When was the last time you picked up a book? When was the last time you actually made an investment? I invest thousands every single year in my learning. Why? It pays. It pays big bucks to learn. And so we've got to rekindle that fire and to recognize learning can be joy-filled. It can be personally meaningful. That's my challenge as a trainer. I hope that you will join me in the Life Design Lab and Warrior Women's Society. Those programs will help. I'm realizing now as I talk to more people, midlife crisis doesn't have to be a thing, my friends. Let's call it our midlife celebration. Play some cool in the gang. Celebrate that you're still in this game. And let's go, people. Woo-woo! All right, I'm going into this appointment now, so send me some prayers.